Space exploration is a promising task of mankind, which makes it possible to make fundamental scientific discoveries. So far, Earth's civilization has managed only twice to make a personal visit to other planets. In 1969 and 1972, man flights to the moon took place. From the outside, including on board, space probes and glider rovers have advanced much further in the exploration of celestial bodies. Robots have repeatedly visited the moon, traveled to Mars and Venus, plunged into the atmosphere of Jupiter, peered beyond the rings of Saturn and landed on its satellite, Titan. They got to the asteroids, descended on comets, and only our neighbor, Mercury, which periodically approaches Earth at 82 million kilometers, remains the most mysterious and little studied. What's the reason? After all, by cosmic standards from us to him a short distance away. So why don't we send starships to Mercury? The mysterious planet has proven to be a tough nut to crack. Despite being discovered more than 3,000 years ago, Mercury is still hard to even see. Copernicus lamented at the end of his life that he'd never seen Mercury. Nearly 500 years have passed since then. A Hubble Space Telescope orbiting Mercury could theoretically observe Mercury. But there's a great risk that such a mission would be Hubble's last. After all, if you direct the lens of the telescope on Mercury, the focus will inevitably be the Sun, as the planet is removed from it at most 28.3 tenths of a degree. Therefore, the rays of the luminary, though not sizzle, but hopelessly damage the lens Hubble. And through special helioscopes that allow you to observe the Sun, no other objects are not visible. What do we even know about the mysterious Mercury? According to one theory, Mercury was originally a satellite of Venus and later lost its friend. It formed in another solar system and wandered into ours. Theory 3 The planet once formed in the inner part of the protoplanetary disk. But all these theories we can neither confirm nor deny yet. Mercury, the first from the Sun, is a planet that belongs to the Earth group, in geology and internal structure, it is similar to Earth. It consists of a massive liquid core surrounded by a thin silicate mantle and crust. The crust is densely riddled with craters, evidence of collisions with meteorites and comets. The surface has jagged scarps formed when the planet cooled and compressed. Mercury has a weak atmosphere with hydrogen, oxygen, helium, potassium, and sodium. All these elements are constantly brought in by the solar wind or vaporized from the surface. But because of its weak magnetic field and insufficient high-temperature gravity, Mercury cannot hold on to its atmosphere and is gradually losing it. A surface that at noon is red-hot to 427 degrees, so hot that you can melt zinc and lead on it. So Mercury is more like an infernal scorcher, where guests are clearly not welcome. But the main reason for the attention of researchers to Mercury is not the temperature of the planet's surface at all. The problem is that Mercury is extremely difficult to catch with a probe. And the diameter of the planet is less than 5,000 kilometers, it moves around the Sun in a strongly elongated elliptical orbit, one of the most eccentric in the solar system. At perihelion, Mercury approaches the Sun at 46 million kilometers, and at aphelion it moves away at 69.8 million kilometers, a difference of 20.3 million kilometers. Earth's average orbital velocity is 30 km per second, while Mercury's is 48 km per second. That is, after launching the Earth, we need to slow down the device. And during the transition from one orbit to another decently accelerate. But we can't just accelerate. The gravity of the nearby Sun will attract the probe, increasing its speed, and the weak gravity of Mercury will not be enough to land the first time. All these factors must be taken into account and correct the trajectory with jeweler's precision. If a little wrong in the calculations, the probe will fly past the coveted goal and simply crash into the sun. That is why the mission of the Pioneer Mariner 10, launched in 1973, was limited to three passes near Mercury. The American station took pictures of the part of the surface that came into view and measured the temperature and magnetic field which made it possible to determine the presence of an extremely rarefied atmosphere. 
Only American and Messenger, launched in 2004, were able to make a hard landing on Mercury. Due to the complexity of the calculations, it took almost seven years for the drone to enter Mercurian orbit. So how did Messenger manage to get from Earth orbit to Mercury orbit? The spacecraft was launched on August 3, 2004. To reach the target trajectory, the station performed six complex gravity maneuvers around the Earth, Venus and Mercury, which saved fuel for further trajectory correction, and additionally performed 12 trajectory correction maneuvers to eliminate errors in gravity maneuvers, on January 14, 2008, October 6, 2008, and September 30, 2009, Messenger only approached Mercury's orbit and passed by. On March 17, 2011, after a braking maneuver, the station began its final preparatory turn. On March 18, it entered a high elliptical orbit at the apogee of Mercury's trajectory, that is, at the farthest point of the orbit. In late 2014, Messenger ran out of fuel, after which it became impossible to adjust its trajectory. On April 30, 2015, the station collapsed on the surface of Mercury. During Messenger's flight, it managed to take 277,000 images of the surface. Many of them were unique, and we were able to see areas that had been inaccessible before. One of the most interesting findings was the Mercury limbo seen through the eyes of Messenger. The heat plane is a giant impact crater formed by an asteroid impact and later filled with lava. Previously, scientists doubted that Mercury had any periods of volcanic activity, but Messenger has dispelled all doubts. Moreover, no central-type volcanoes were found here, with a crater at the top and eruption through the vents, magma poured out through multi-kilometer cracks in the crust and flooded the area. The modeling revealed that the last volcanoes on the planet went extinct about three and a half billion years ago, after it cooled and shrank, Mercurian moldas, which resemble mold patches, were also discovered. They are concave folds of crust of bizarre shapes, arranged in groups. Of great interest was the spider crater, from which cracks diverge in all directions. Analysis of data showed that near the North Pole much less craters than near the South Pole, Mercury has a full-fledged magnetosphere, partially protecting it from the solar wind and cosmic rays. The planet's magnetic field is not symmetrical about the poles. The prevalence of chemical elements has also been analyzed. But the most interesting, it seems, is yet to come. On October 20, 2018, the third mission to Mercury, the BEP Colombo mission, a seven-year mission, was launched. The spacecraft will need nine gravity maneuvers to save fuel. It has already successfully traveled once near Earth and twice near Venus. Now it will have to make six flights near Mercury itself to reach the target trajectory. On December 5, 2025, the station should reach its goal and release two artificial satellites into different orbits at once. BEP Colomba has a number of tasks, to study the surface of Mercury, to understand the sequence of events of the geological development of the planet, to determine the chemical composition of the surface, to analyze the internal structure, to study the magnetosphere, to make measurements of the magnetic field and analyze its interaction with the solar wind, as well as to create a map of hydrogen containing compounds and water ice, where does water ice come from on a hot planet and why hasn't it melted? Information that deep Mercurian craters at the poles contain a substance with high moldu came from the Goldstone Radio Telescope and was confirmed during the Messenger mission. But maybe it is not ice, but some kind of mineral, such as nugget sulfur? After all, we already know that hard Mercurian rocks have about 10 times more sulfur than Earth rocks. Is there water ice on Mercury? What is its origin? If it is not ice, what kind of substance is it? Will the new expedition be able to answer these questions? What do you think? Write your answers in the comments. Thank you for watching, dear friends. Your kind words and support motivate me to make more and more interesting videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all future videos, because there are many more interesting and exciting things to come. See you on our space journey.